Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 54 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp, on the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours, and the fives, and the six. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight to watch the show. Appreciate it. This is a recorded show, so no, no live stream tonight, but appreciate y'all coming through. Definitely uh before we get started make sure you guys like coming and subscribe to the channel almost at 600 subscribers so definitely want to get over this more before thanksgiving so appreciate y'all but as always i got my main man tez in the building what's happening what's happening mr photographer mr do it all videographer can do anything you want him to do he's in the spaceship y'all see him in there <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, a good brother, a good friend that I met on, met through this YouTube space and in close proximity, my main man, Coach Sean. Welcome, brother. Welcome back, my brother, to you, and welcome back me to your channel. Yeah, much love yeah. to Tiz, much love to my brother Brinsky. Thank you for having me, man, for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Always great to have you on here, man. Been on your show appreciate way you. too many times. Now I said, no, nah, man, I got to have my people on here, man. I appreciate you, brother. Oh, yeah. Of course, y'all, we uh on here for a little while just talking about uh, we're going to get into the college football playoff rankings, our rivalry week predictions, and – we're going to talk about this award finalist controversy in my eyes. A lot of, a lot of spots are just leaving off bit time players, which makes no sense to me, but, exactly. uh, man, it's, it, it is crazy out here, but we're going to start off. Which one we're going to, we can start off with, uh, we can start off with the Jim Thorpe award. I think everybody see that. Uh, Jade, uh, I think that's Jade Barron. Yeah. Uh, from Te Texas. Yeah. Got Caleb Downs mm -hmm. from Ohio State and Malachi Stars from Georgia. I think we all <laughs> know why. Mm -hmm. that That's probably the most controversial one, with uh, especially with Travis Hunter not uh, being in that category. I love Caleb Downs, and I know how it's going to come off and sound because um, he used to play at Alabama. Now he played at Ohio State. I'm not one of those fans. I'm like, I'm happy the brother's doing his thing. But I don't think he's playing as great as Travis Hunter to be on this award. The other two brothers are uh, playing good. Now, you can probably may argue with Malachi. Malachi not playing up to his standard like he normally play. But this feels very politic. Very politic <laughs> driven yeah. on this. What's your thought, Coach Carl? I mean, I, why I keep calling you Coach Carl? I keep thinking, mm -hmm. shout out to Coach Carl, man. Shout out to Coach Carl. <laughs> My bad. I mean, for me, man, um, when I look at Malachi Starks, Malachi Starks is a hell of an athlete. I mean, the guy can cover all, all areas of the field. He can run hash mark to hash mark. He can play safety. He can play free or strong. Middle of the field, split safety. You can play anything, right? Caleb can too. Um, but I don't think either one of those guys is as versatile as Travis Hunter, right? I just don't. Mm -hmm. Especially the Texas DB. DB. I see him get flamed up a couple of times, right? I think they just like his potential. To not have Travis Hunter in the Jim Thorpe running for that award is definitely personal. Mm -hmm. It's definitely personal. Um, the, everybody who got eyeballs know Travis Hunt is the best defensive back in the country. Um, this kid is as versatile as any defensive back in the country. You can put him on the hash. You can put him, you know, to the field side corner. You can put him to, to, to the boundary. You can put him at any of the safety spots. You can bring him down in the box. He can play any position in the secondary. So to not have this kid at this award is definitely personal. So the person that I pick is not even on the list. Yeah, man. I think we all and matter of fact, when uh we go to each award, y'all tell me which player y'all would have picked for the award. I mean, do they have the right people up there that you would have picked? 
and who you would have uh, picked for the award. I think we all would have picked Travis Hunter. I'm not sure. I know me and you for sure, Coach. Huh? What about yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I love what Travis is doing. I love the versatility, like you said. Uh, I think the low tackling numbers probably hurt him a bit. Um, he got like, what, maybe close to 20 tackles on the year. I know he got like three interceptions. There, there, there are corners with more interceptions. There are corners with more tackles. Uh, statistically, there are corners who not even on this list, ironically, that that have better stats than him. Uh, I think that if he – he definitely would have been on this list if, had he been not been an offensive player too. Um, I think it's a little bit personal, like you said, in, in the sense of he's got to be amazing. To be on both of these lists, to be on, like you, you know what I mean, like he he would have had to be and putting up almost record numbers at corner for them to look at it and be like, you know what, we're gonna put you on this list. Uh, I don't think the gap that between him and some other people isn't isn't as big. Uh, yeah, but think, no, go ahead. No, nah, but you know, I hey, you turn on the tape. You turn on the film, and, and it, a lot of times it's not about the statistics, us as fans, but we see the plays that he made. Some of the plays that he made at defensive back tell you with your eyes that this is the best defensive back in college football. You know what I mean? So like, if we disregard the stats and we just look at the film, what do your eyes tell you? They tell you, like, this is the best corner in college football. Mm -hmm. um, he does some amazing stuff instinctually come routinely or come off his man to cover another man just based on instincts alone and knowing coverages and stuff you just can't teach. Uh, and I think that just he's played on a team where the defensive line is it the greatest? You know, you I, I we routinely say it, man, like I'm I'm kind of thankful he didn't end up at a SEC school. <laughs> you imagine him at a Georgia or, or, or Alabama or one of these teams that's got a significant front seven and pass rush. You got a player like him on the back end paired with some of the safeties we see in the SEC right now. Like, he'd be a problem. So I oh, think yeah. a lot of it, you know, has to do with the team that he's playing for, too. Uh, they don't want yeah. they don't want to buy it. They don't want to give him that much hype. Yeah, man. Of course, it's um, playing for Deion Sanders uh, is technically really all – what it is and of course uh corner with a lot of tackles i think prime said it best man he ain't got a lot of tackles because they ain't throwing towards him that that shows right. you how pretty <laughs> and if it's about say, tackles why not put sure. the safety from wisconsin up there hunter i forgot how to pronounce his last yeah. name hunter or something he had like right at 70 tackles 60 something tackles if it's just mm -hmm. about tackles and you know getting in the box and doing all that they definitely don't want him to win the uh, the, yeah. the primary defensive back award. They definitely don't want to give him that, and, and it's it's definitely a little little smut on that award because <laughs> you didn't even have the kid in the. Um, you know, I can't even take the list serious because you didn't even have the kid. If you want to put him in yeah, and, and not, not let him win, it to him. Yeah. cool. I ain't got no problem with that. But to not even recognize him as one, come mm -hmm. on, yeah, yeah. man. And I think me and Tez was talking about it before, because uh, we was talking about it on the phone uh, about the defensive player of the year. Like, he's up for defensive player of the year. So how right. is he not up for the Jim Thorpe Award, which makes That's no weird. sense. No <laughs> sense whatsoever. Right. And, no and no then sense. we was talking about, like, uh, like uh, Tez was saying something about, like, a defensive player in the NBA – not being first team all uh defensive team or you win an MVP in the league and you're not first team all NBA. That doesn't make any sense. I don't right, care. right. If yes. I'm the MVP, yeah. that means I am the best this year. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. And I think and I think they took to the Jim Thorpe Award is my favorite. That's the only reason why we started off with that one. That's that's yeah. my favorite. I always love uh the DBs and to see him not on there. Pisses me off. 
because it's only certain times that they gave out the award I've been mad about, and I think it was that year, uh, uh, the COVID year, when Pat Sertan was up for the award, and he didn't get it. They gave it uh, to a guy from TCU, which was crazy to me. I was like, stop yeah. it, man. <laughs> man, just to I, your point, to your point, bro, I'm looking at it. Uh, Caleb Downs, statistically, Caleb Downs doesn't have an interception or forced fumble this year. Uh, he's got 29 solo tackles. Exactly. Uh, so, so on paper, he probably shouldn't be on this list either. That that's why that's why it didn't make any type of sense to me. Mm-hmm. It didn't At make all. no type of sense. Right. I like I know how great Caleb is, and I know how great Caleb's going to be. But this year was not his year to be on that list. Right. So right. Man, it that one just like really, really pissed me off, man. So that's why I had to get that one out of the way. I'm glad that <laughs> we pretty much like the uh Ben Nair award. We, of course we got Travis. Uh I hold don't up, know how hold we, up, hold up. Go ahead on go the ahead. Ben Nair. Now see on the Ben Nair. Now I picked Travis Hunter for the Maxwell, the player of the year, because of what he do on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I know Genty, right. and we'll talk about that in a minute, but for the Ben Eric, for the defensive player, I picked Abdul Carter. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. Abdul Carter, I watched this dude last year, man. This dude was a monster kid, 6'3 by 250, right? Run a 4'4", 40, man. I think the kid had 78 tackle. Uh, let me see. No, 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 I'm getting mixed up. It was like 48 tackles or 50 tackles and eight sacks and always a force. He always getting doubled, right? This kid is a grown man, bro, a grown man. I watched him dominate last year, man. Couldn't nobody do nothing with that dude, man. We to couldn't me, do nothing with him. <laughs> yeah, man. To, to me, I think as far as position, I think he may be the best – I think he may be the 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 the, the Bednarik Award as far as for his position. I think he's a better linebacker than Travis is corner. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If, that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. This dude is by far the best linebacker, outside linebacker. And he played all over the place, right? And Travis yeah. is too, but I think he's more dominant over the over the course of time. I seen him dominate like this last year. I would definitely go for the Bednarik. For Abdul Carter from Penn State. That, that's not a bad, that's not not a bad fit. And I would go for the same thing. <laughs> He's just been dominant all year or whatnot, yeah. especially with the two guys that you have him up there with. I know Travis has definitely uh, helped his team, but it ain't like Colorado uh, defense is just lights out for the most part. Yeah. And Caleb, yeah. Caleb plays on a team full of like defensive stars. So, and even though uh, Ohio State has been up there as one of the top defensive teams, it ain't like they playing anybody. I think we all know how we feel about uh, the Big Ten overall, bro. We, 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 we're not <laughs> – like, you got – it's, like, top heavy. Of course, you got your Ohio State and, like, Michigan last year, but we see how bad they fell off. Like, when uh, – and – if you put uh, who is they top team like the Oregon's, Ohio State's, and uh, Penn That's State? It. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, State. Oregon, Ohio Penn, State, Penn State. Penn like, State is Kentucky to me. That that's what they yeah. need. I was they just need. about to say, what would you put Penn State in the SEC? They would not be in my top five nowhere. <laughs> no, they Kentucky. No. Kentucky beat. Every time Kentucky play them in the bowl game, they they struggle to beat Kentucky. Either Kentucky beat them by a close game. Them and Kentucky are very similar, very yeah. similar. Yeah, you know I said they like bit team good. That's why I think uh, John Franklin will always have a job. Like when he yeah. had that great year at Vanderbilt, he was smart to just get up out of there because this is about as good as right. Vanderbilt going to be. Let me go out there and get this yeah. bit time job. I, right. I'm gonna keep getting these uh, ten and two, nine and three seasons at Penn State. I'm gonna always keep a job. <laughs> Yeah, they don't fire coaches at Penn State either. So it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> facts. I'm like, hey yeah. man, that's good. That's good yeah. right there. Like we'll never win a big game. We'll probably win it up every blue moon. But hey, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, I'll go Abdul Carter too. 
So that yeah. was um I think that's pretty much an easy choice. Yeah. Uh the Mackey Award. Well, the Mackey Award mm-hmm. is pretty much loaded for the most part. I like Mason uh Taylor on the list. Uh I just seen a guy from uh Bowling Green because they was hyping up the uh, other guy, uh Tyler Warren from Penn State. But they I like uh, Mitchell Evans from, from Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. The guy from Bowling Green, man, uh Harold uh Finnan Jr. Like yeah. I think he had like uh 93 catches, uh I think 1200 yards and nine touchdowns. And I was like, hmm, let me go see something real quick. And yeah, he's he's nice like that. I hadn't saw uh Mitchell stats, but I do see I have seen them play, obviously. And uh catching ball over the middle, you know, the short route. I like them big tight ends that'll block and catch the short route. You yeah. know what I mean? I like that man. He he'll have a long NFL career. I like Mitchell Evans on that. Yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, look who wanna jump on in all late. Uh the man that said he was gonna be here. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm here. The vice president. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 looking at the handle that he got today. The vice president of the Jalen Miro fan club. Hey man, this, Mr. Jason Walker. What's going on, man? What's going on, Brinsky? What's going on, Coach Sean? Big fan. How you doing, Auburn Tez? So much How you doing, man? man? How you feeling, brother? <laughs> oh yeah, man. I'm gonna ask you, man. Uh, before we go, before we get back uh, on the uh, Mackey, do you do you think uh, Travis Hunter should have been on Jim Thorpe Award? No. You said no. Nope. Tell us Ooh. why. I really want to hear. I- that. I, I because I think he does a lot of things good. He doesn't do anything really great. So I, I, so, I, would, I want to hear. I, can I ask him something? I want to hear what he got to say. Because no, school, dude, please, please tell me what does uh, Caleb Downs do great? Oh, better yet, what does my man from Texas do great? Because I've seen him get flamed like Cheetos so many yeah. times. <laughs> well, you know, Caleb, Caleb Downs really don't get beat that much. Uh, you can you can just kind of see it in his play that he's around somebody that played NFL football a lot because he's always in position. Somebody may make a catch on him, but he's always in position. Travis Hunter get beat sometimes, you know, but everybody's gonna get beat sometimes, right? That's just a sure. part of playing the position in, in general. Mm-hmm. I just sure. think that as far as like coverage skills, he's not the best. He's not the best, you know, DB in college football. He just can make up for a lot of things with the athleticism. But as far as like technically being a DB, he's not the best. Like you could you could realistically make a case, like if you're just looking at film, that uh, what's buddy from from Bama? Which uh, uh, Demonte Jackson? Demonte Jackson is a better all around DB than Travis Hunter. I see. I think Caleb is better in the box. I I don't think Caleb. I don't think he played well when they put him on the hash. I think he played really good in the like when they put him in the box. He's very physical. You know, I mean, Caleb is probably sure. one of the best tackling safeties I've ever seen. Like mm-hmm. at a young that kid just don't miss tackles, bro. He just he just don't. What I like about Travis is Travis is always gonna play the top receiver on the other team. He don't come off the field. He's solid and 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 that presence in college football make college quarterbacks not challenging, right? So I don't really know how super good he is because the college quarterbacks just really don't throw at him for real, for real. You know, every once in a while they'll test him, every, you know, but they really stay away from that guy. You know what I mean? His athleticism is just like you said, though. That dude is awesome, man. You know what I'm saying? He got that thing in the NFL look for that potential, that key word. Yeah. There. You know what I mean? For sure. Now, I like that. that. I like I like that answer. I like that. Yeah. yeah, and I think, bro, if he was healthy this year, uh, I think the best uh, cornerback in college football, and I believe he's going to be a star in the NFL is Will Johnson. He definitely would have been on this uh, award list for real. I, I think he's just think shut down. Cool. And you're starting to see these big, uh, uh, big corners in the NFL now with him – with uh, Pat Sertan, Sauce, and uh, Tariq uh, Wooten 
all in the NFL. So that's like the new wave of like cornerbacks, these big old guys. You used to yeah. have some of them on, but not as often. Yeah, Do I you? remember Philly, Philly had tall corners at one time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it just wasn't like, like Darrell yeah, Reeves is probably Seattle. six foot. But you ain't yeah, had like no six three, six four. Right. Like, yeah. You remember when Tariq, I mean when Aqib Talib was just an anomaly yeah. in the second mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. no, what I said. And Chris Harris Jr., uh, he like 5'11. That's <laughs> no, what I said. But he he probably one of the best pure corners I have ever seen. If you just yeah. watch him. But yeah. yeah, back to that uh Mackie, man. I just wanted to ask you on that because I know you want <laughs> some of that. Uh-oh. Uh, who you would take off this list? I mean, who you? I, now I say only people. Of course, Mason Taylor name sticks out, and I said yeah. Harold Finnan Jr. out of Bowling Green. I just seen him, so I'm not about to act like I just watched him all year. I just seen his stats come up. I was like, oh, he balling. Let me see what he's doing. He a dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Mason Taylor. Is it me? Really- been like super consistent since, like, you know, at least of the last two years of like we're actually paying attention. He's been super consistent. He's the go to. If they need something, yeah, if they need, a, they need a quick five yards to get a first down, even with Lacey on the field, you know what, you know where he's looking. He just, he has reliable hands, man. Mm hmm. Is who you got? Um, uh, I haven't seen a lot of these tight ends. I'm not, I'm not I understand. Uh huh. Mason Taylor is good. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Mason Taylor is uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I hadn't seen Buddy from Bowling Green, but I heard a lot of hype around him. Uh, mm. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have to give it to Warren because he's the one that I've seen the most of. I know that's probably not a reason why you give somebody an award, but uh, kind of like, kind of like Coach said, it, you know, I like the tight end that can block and get in the run game, uh, one that can catch, of course. And then this guy is one of those tight ends that if he's covered, he's open. Like from what I've seen, you know, if, if it's one on one, you throw the ball up, he gonna he gonna come down with it. Um, so. I have to go for him. Okay. Let me see what we got. Uh, the Belentikoff. Of course, Travis is on there. Matt Millen is on there. We got Nick Nash from San Jose State. That was one of those one. That was one of those ones. I was just like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, if it's a stat of wool. I mean, I don't know that it is. Yeah. If you're going to go with stats, he all they got. They throw to this dude like 11, 12 times a game. I think right. when I looked last time, dude had close to 100 catches. It was like 90-something, if I remember. Oh, well, yeah. Um, he, yeah. It was like 1,200 yards. He, he got like 14 touchdowns. And if you look at his stat, he had like seven more call back. He had like mm. seven touchdowns on the season call back, 14 total. If I'm not mistaken, it was 96. I think it was 96 touchdowns for Nick Nash, if I'm not mistaken. A little over 1,200, almost 1,300 yards. The other guy, <laughs> yeah, it was like almost 100 damn catches. They go to him. The other guy actually rivaled him in yardage. Uh, the I can't pronounce the young man's first name. McMillan. He had right. just as much uh, receiving yards, but way less catches So and way less touchdowns. So, you know. I would have to go if if that if that's the three I gotta choose from, if that's my three, give me Nash. Give me San Jose dude, Nash. Mm. If that's my three, I gotta choose from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this, I think, uh, go ahead. My fault. This is like the list. So I'm one I'm one of the people that think Travis is a better corner than he is receiving. So Thanks. If there was a list for him to be left off of, it w- for me, it would have been this one. This I one. feel like they, yeah. are, they are better receivers. Yeah. I feel like they're yeah. better. They're better freshman receivers. 
uh, than <laughs> Travis Hunter. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't see him as one of the top three receivers in the country. Uh, ball skills, elite. Uh, yeah, but definitely. other than that, the nuances of playing the receiver position, I don't think he has that. I think he's just Actually. a player at, who's athletic enough to you, you run, throwing the ball up. Once it's in the air, he's he's better than everybody. So uh, I would – I don't even know if the receiver I would get us to is on the list. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I, I would go with uh, – I'd probably still go with McMillan, though. He, he's been – He's been the consistent point on this list the entire season. Um, so I would go with him. Yeah, I think yeah. I would probably second that, too. I, I would definitely second that. Um, he's – if you're looking at stats plus, you know, what you what you actually see with your eyes, I think he he's one of one on the field this year. Uh, I, I recently just saw the Nash kid. I was just kind of just – fumbling around, you know, YouTube and saw one of those oh, most exciting player in college football videos. And I was like, oh, well, let me check this out. And I mean, yeah, but they, like, like Coach Sean said, they throw the ball to him 200 times a game. So <laughs> like his stat <laughs> should look Thanks. like that. And, and you know, I, as much as I love Travis, like he, he's not a clean route runner. He is, and I've said it before, I'm on the record on this podcast saying it, he's never open. He just has the best ball skills of anybody I think I've yeah. probably ever seen. Yeah. And so he can just compensate for not being open. But, you know, I don't know how, how much yeah, that's going to translate to the next level. But at this level, yeah. it, it just works because he is by by far the best set of hands yeah. maybe to ever touch a football field in college football. So if you, yeah, if I can't you talking about – go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, my, Bruce, my bad. Bruce. No, go ahead. Go you ahead. Talking, if you took my best receivers, and, and I know his quarterback was gone, so he didn't have the stat. <laughs> to me, coming out of his break, breaking, you know, coming out of his break, breaking down, running routes the right way, blocking, um, especially on, on, on anything like meshes and high lows, <laughs> stuff like that. I think Luther Burden is the best receiver in the country mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, that kid, he, he probably the most complete for sure. That kid, yep. man, he'll catch anything. He ain't scared to go across the middle. I've seen him take a hellacious lick. Mm. Kid get back up. He'll go to the sideline and fall out, but he ain't going to fall out on the field. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, he's had some horrible quarterback play this year. So his play is – you know how that go, right? But if you're looking for a complete receiver, I love Luther Burden from Missouri. You know what I mean? Nah, I, I, I never forget in our game, Brady Cook was hurt. There was no Luther Burden to be found. Brady could come back in the game, and all of a sudden he just turned into a different receiver. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. You got, hey man, you got to go to your guy, man. That's why yeah. Yeah. we see guys like that in college. Like that's why I always consider. I know, like Smitty got all the uh, got the uh, Belinda call, the Heisman Trophy, and all that at uh, Alabama, but it's still Julio. I was like, man, if you give Julio Bryce or two or any of those. People in college, just that offense, just that mm-hmm. offense, just that offense. Yeah, man, with, Julio, with Lane Kiffin, I mean, they didn't ever throw to Julio for real. That's what I'm yeah. saying. He just the NFL can scouts. Y'all imagine, can y'all imagine him in today's with, offense in, in a Sark yeah. offense? Unstoppable, <laughs> crazy. Oh, in the, oh, my God. oh, crazy in the shark in the Stark offense, man. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, well, that is just unfair. He ain't doing nothing but creating space. Man, you thought you thought Smitty was doing something, boy. Julio would have yeah. just went completely off, man. That but was you know what? Boy. I give Smitty them credit because when you talk to those guys, I seen Smitty on a uh, Darius Slayton show. They all give Julio his flowers. They all, mm-hmm. all of them give Julio. They call him the yeah. Godfather. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Smitty. They all say Julio is the man. So you know, man, he he's the foundational this player, man. Yeah, he's the foundational yeah. player to the whole Nick Satan dynasty. You get him yeah. and you see like the players that follow him right after that. Yeah. You get players like that, other people going to come. That's why I think like for Kellen DeBoer, like Ryan Williams is that guy for him to just like, okay, I got my guy. That's why you got uh Keelan, 
coming yeah. in. You got other guys going to come. In. They're just going to follow. But NFL scouts see, man. That's why I don't believe, like, you put up all these stats in uh, college. I used – I didn't understand that when I was younger, but when I get older, I think only because me and Julio just a year apart. Yeah. Uh, just seeing, I'm like, man, I know AJ Green doing his thing over here. Uh, Alshon Jeffries, and I think it was Chris Childs at um, at uh, Arkansas doing his thing, and Julio would. It seemed like every big game he would show up and do something amazing. That was like, man, the scouts were just drooling. That's why the uh, Falcons got a steal that night. Yeah. So shout out to him. But I think Matt Millen, this is this is his award. I know him and uh, Luther Burton. They, they, them boys won five star for no reason. Them boys were not five star for no reason. Them boys are going to be good pros. I just can't wait to see when they get to the NFL. Man, it's going. It, it all depends on what system you go to, man. That's yeah, really all that yeah. comes down. But you see how Jalen Hyde went to the Giants, and we never heard from Jalen Hyde again. <laughs> I don't. Even, it, it 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 got so bad. I don't even know if he's in the league. That's just how. But I know he's in the league. Yeah, that's how bad the quarterback play has been in New York. So shout out to Prime. He gonna interfere with that to make sure he get to the right team. <laughs> and I, I don't blame him because Eli, if Eli Manning can do it, Thanks. I believe Prime can do that. So, and what it's looking like, I, if I'm a bad man, I think it's the Oakland Raiders because he clearly mm-hmm. wants to be there. So, be on the lookout. Don't be surprised if you see him on o- Oakland Raiders. What? You don't want him to be a Cleveland Brown? They what? said they bring – I think they they could, but I don't think it. It uh, all depends on like their structure, who they uh like, who's on your ownership. It's just like Bryce, Carolina is not a great place only because of their owner. He's going to mess everything up. So you got to least in like C.J. Stroud is in the best position he can possibly. Be. You got a good head coach. You got a GM that's coming from uh that came from the Bill Belichick tree. And you see how that team is being built and the ownership. It got to trickle all the way down. It, if the owner is bad, of course, everything else is going to be bad. Look at Dan Snyder for us. And you see when we got rid of him, you see who we got now as our quarterback, Jaden Dames. Yeah, still trash. But hey, never mind. I want to go down. I this ain't the NFL. <laughs> and the system. Yeah. And the system. <laughs> and who we – now – I think one conversation is just pretty much unanimous. It's a runaway. It's the Dope Walker Award. It's, it's, I don't know. Genty is – shout out to the other guys, but this is Genty Award. They just pre- yeah. they just happy to just go to a free trip in Orlando to go sure. to Disney World to have a good time. <laughs> but this Thanks. is that man's award. Uh, I think – I didn't even put it up here. But I'm about to put it up here in a second. But well, like his, uh, to yard, Henry had. like his uh yards after contact leads yeah. everybody in the country. Yeah. Yeah. We talk, we, we talk <laughs> about Heisman last, but that alone, if your yards after contact yeah. is higher than everybody in the country, come on, man. If one vote go to anybody else, they need to be fired ASAP. Yeah, he got like 30 yeah. touchdowns. It's crazy. Yeah, it's they, his stats was better than Derrick Henry's in his uh-huh. high school. Yeah. And, and the uh, crazy thing crazy. is, man, they are literally a field goal away from being undefeated. And the team that they lost to is the number one team in the country. Right. right. So right. he has a lot going for him right now, man. I, I am extremely happy for him. Yeah. Uh, that's why I said we won't need to uh, spend too much time on that topic because oh. that, that, that is uh, – <laughs> hold on. I just uh hold on. I just uh pulled it up. Hold on. Let me see if I can download this real I love the way he runs the ball, man. He he reminds me of like Maurice Jones Drew. Mm-hmm. Like if I was gonna give him a player comp, yeah. that's probably who I would give him. Facts. Bro, it's loading nah. up right now, man. Here you go, right here. This is amazing. It's incredible. All right, it's crazy. That is crazy. Like, oh my goodness. 
That was yeah. it, man. This is a runaway, <laughs> man. Enjoy that award easily. Don't walk award first team all American. Anybody vote any differently, fire them immediately. Take away their vote. Give it to Coach uh-huh. uh, immediately. Give it a tie. Give it. Give it a whole. It's a whole it's, bunch of people yeah. votes that need to be taken away anyway. Yeah. Yeah. They, right. they don't have. Even, they, I'm glad I put this other one up here because they ain't even have it up there for the. Uh, where is it? I don't even think it's on this one either. Oh, that's crazy. Um, for the Buckets Award, they didn't even have um, Campbell on there. Really? That's crazy. Mm. That It was somebody on Twitter literally put they had Danny Stutzman up there. They had two up uh, I gotta find that uh post. They should have had Campbell and Jalen Walker on there from Georgia. Both yeah. on the board. That's a fact. <laughs> and they ain't have them up there, man. They literally had uh Campbell Ward up there. I had his stats up there, man. And he's leading in everything. And I know I'm like, this is how I know it's politics. Like Danny Stutzman is a great linebacker, but he's not having like one of those years like he normally has that he's been having at Oklahoma. My boy has been showing out since the first game. <laughs> Lights out since day one. And he doesn't even make it. So that was uh, another one that I was just, like, highly disappointed by, man. Mm-mm. So I'm trying to see who else they had. I know they got studs, man. man. That's a terrible snub, though. Who yeah. else? Thanks. That's a terrible snub. Yeah, well, um, Jalen Walker. Is Jaden Walker on there? Yeah, it said Jaden Walker is a finalist for the Buckets Award. Okay. And not Jaden. It. it just doesn't it. make sense. I Chris can't Paul. find the, the I think Chris Paul list. Jr. is up there to – no, 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 no. I think it's Barry Carter. Paul. Yeah, Barry Carter's up there. Like, the two biggest Crazy. snubs that they had on That's here was Kyle Lewis and – from out of Pittsburgh and Anthony Hill Jr. out of Texas. Mm-hmm. And Anthony Hill was definitely stood by a lot of these guys. He got 7.5. I don't know. I'm about to just post this one too. Because I'm surprised they didn't have this one on the list. I guess it wasn't fully announced. I don't know. Because this doesn't make any sense to me for this award. Like, how can Are you leave? Jihad Campbell Sweet. off this list. That it does not make any logical sense. Oh man, that's crazy. I, I, I get it. The only person on this list that they said that has more tackles than Stutzman is the dude from UCLA, Sway Swaysinger, Carson Swaysinger. It, it's coming up at a, right. at 109 tackles. Here we go. Yeah, like just look at the difference. Like Anthony Hill's sacks. <laughs> of course, uh Danny Stutzman, uh, a lot of these guys are not uh like pass rushers. But come on, man. Right. Like the tackles for loss, the forced fumbles. He literally has more forced fumbles than all five of these guys. <laughs> like this whole oh, yeah. list, and then what top it all off that made this so bad? Just y'all looking at this list. Jahad Campbell has 97 total tackles, 51 solo tackles, 11 tackles for loss, five sacks, one interception, one forced fumble recovery, and two forced fumbles. I don't know how you leave that off the list. That makes that is crazy to me. I think there's I think there's a lot of uh, Bama fatigue, you know. And this is it's a down year, so this is literally like an opportunity yeah. for a lot of people to let everybody else shine. You know what I mean? So this is really the year that they, you know, we had the uh, defense has had his own struggles as a whole, and I think that they are kind of penalizing him for for that. So, but yes, yeah, it's still a terrible snub though, for sure. Yeah. I want to uh, who they put. I don't think. I don't think. Well, 
I don't think he was as good as he was last year, but he's still good. Parker Beresford, I don't know if he'll be up for the uh, – I think it's the Mackey Award. Remington. No, Remington, thank you. Remington yeah. Award. See, that one ain't on here either. So, they ain't even announced that one either. Uh, I'm trying to see which one is <laughs> worthy of talking about. I'm kind of surprised by this Luke Groza award, <laughs> and they got the guy from Florida State on there. Just how bad they season is. <laughs> oh hey, that cat is. I looked at that cat. That cat that kicked a 59 yard field goal. Was 12 of 12 in field goal. He ain't missed a field goal mm-hmm. all year. Oh wow. Oh man. okay. See, yeah. there you he's a player on the team. Hey, that's yeah. one thing about. That's one thing about the Groza. They don't care how good the team is. Thanks. Oh yeah, well they they, they snubbed my boy Will Riker last year, man. They snubbed him. They did for the kid for for our kicker that's on our team now, which is crazy. <laughs> he won the Blue Girls Award last year. That's how crazy. What about but, that outland? Mm. My boy Walter Nolan, man, four, forty tackles, five oh. sacks. Ooh, man, yeah, why we – oh, that, that's probably – this one is probably going to be – I think I know who they're going to give it to. Walter Nolan Kevin, is – Kevin, Banks. But they definitely I, – I see them giving it to Mason Graham. It's, Mason it's Graham, so, yeah. Oh, bro. I know Mason Graham is that guy, but Walter has had an awesome year. Man, he, he had, had a, a yeah. big, big impact yeah, he, at uh, he, Ole Miss. That boy's a force, man. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, yeah. Of course. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Ask, did, did you do the O'Brien? Did we do the Davy O'Brien? No, for the last two awards, yeah. So we can we saving the oh, last two. <laughs> yeah, so that that's cool. I'm glad because I was about to move on to something else. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Davy O'Brien. We got uh, Dylan Gabriel. We got Shadour Sanders. We got Cam Ward. Do everybody agree for the quarterbacks? Cam Ward has had a good season. He's had a good mm-hmm. season. I mean, but I think Shador is a better quarterback than Cam, man. Cam, mm-hmm. you know, if you're talking about a pocket pass or somebody that's going to really excel at the NFL, Shador Sanders is the best quarterback in the country. Bro, if they – let me tell you something. If they snub Shador on that award, man, Colorado fans need to, need to go the hell off on Twitter because <laughs> – Shador Get Sanders ready. is the best quarterback. Like, come on, man. Get ready. Say, well. Yeah, and exactly. they better not give it to no damn <laughs> Dylan <laughs> Gabriel. It's, it's, it's sad, and yeah. I know what's coming, and I know it. I was Dylan Gabriel, to... Oregon. Did yeah. you think they're gonna give it to him? No, I think so, man. That's that's a possibility. I can see they doing. It. I can see that thing. only because of yeah. the record. But mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, if you put Dylan Gabriel on Colorado and you push a duel on uh, Oregon, I think Oregon still stays undefeated. But I don't think uh, Colorado has the record that they do. Yeah. yeah because Shador, Shador is really a big part of that team. He has a bad game. It's over. But they, they, they be a different, they'd be a different team with Dylan Gabriel there. Like you have to run a different offense. Yeah, you couldn't expect you couldn't expect Dylan Gabriel to do what Shador Sanders did. Oh no, mm-hmm. and I think uh, from like early in the year when him and Cam that video was talking about when he was late and all that and whatnot and say all oh, this and how Cam started off the year. See, Cam is a better quarterback than him. I'm like, no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> Don't you dare do that because this man is literally. I have seen this man just sit in the pocket and. It's, it look claustrophobic, <laughs> and, uh, and this man's still throwing darts out there, man. And they're trying so, to hurt him. I don't know if y'all seen that hit on his knee. They're oh, trying to hurt him. Who didn't see that? The hit? dude yeah. dove at his knee head first. If that had been, you know what I tweeted? I tweeted out. I said, if this was Arch Manning that somebody did that to, man, oh, y'all would be having a national oh, yeah. revolt. Oh, oh yeah, Woo. they be talking about it right now. It'd be man, it's straight up matter, truth. Matter of fact, Coach. Huh? What we was just, uh, me and you got on this fool, uh, uh, Chase Daniels, former uh, quarterback uh, in Missouri, yeah. former NFL quarterback. And we said, oh, I didn't know we can push the ref. But he didn't want to show, he didn't want to talk about what happened before the same guy that tried to take out his knees 
yeah, mushing his head all in the ground and doing all this extra uh extra stuff on the ground. Then when he gets up, that's why I said don't slow it down. Of course, it look bad if you slow it down. Anything slow down, play it in real time and see how fast the ref got in there. He trying to push the guy off off. The ref just so mm -hmm. happened to get in the way, like man, nobody just gonna sit there. That's human nature. I mean, Especially but shot, that I so so shout out to the ref and not throwing him out the game. Mm-hmm. We talk and a lot about the ref. We we talk a lot about the refs, but in in, yeah. in that instance, they made the right because it would have been it would have been real easy to throw him out of the game. For sure. Yeah. It would have been super yeah. easy. So so like that's why I mean I don't, I'm not gonna say I agree with it, but uh, but yeah, you have to be smarter than that as a player. There's no yeah. excuse for it because that can get you kicked out of the game. Yeah. It's not like pushing a player. Yeah. Even if it's by mistake. We've seen the refs kick players out of the game for mistakes. Mm -hmm. You you flipping the ball, trying to get it to the ref, and if, if he don't catch it and hit him in the face, kick him out of the game. Like we've mm -hmm. seen that happen before. So like that's one of the things about Shador is I, I mean, I don't want to harp on it, but like that's one of the things about him is even that Cam, like bringing up that Cam Cam Ward uh, clip, is like that is going to be his his knock in the draft. He's he's going to go to the combine. He's going to light it up. He's going to look. He, he he's going to make all the throws. He's going to do all of that. But then they're going to question his character, his work ethic. Those are the things that's going to come in question when it comes to Shador. And that he gonna see this clip again <laughs> when he's in those interview room, view rooms. He's gonna see this clip of him pushing the ref again. So that's what I'm saying. Like you gotta be, he's gotta be smarter than that. You got a future ahead of you. You can cost your team a, a win, even though that game was already at the hand. But I'm just saying, like in the scenario, close game, you can cost your team a win if you're not on the floor for something that was a mistake. Looks like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not always gonna be fair. Just the reality of it. Oh, and Chase you know. Daniels was trying to be funny, man. He was trying to he be was. funny. He <laughs> he knew what happened. Oh, I didn't know we could push the rest, sort of bypass and what happened. Pass you know, I had already heard what kind of locker room guy he was from some guy. You know, his net his reputation precedes him in the NFL locker rooms. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I like man, he he just a clown in my eyes, bro. I I had little respect for him and I have no respect for him now because it's some some of these guys that I just hate seeing I'm not even gonna put them in that category with uh Danny Connell. It's just some of the most annoying people in college football. You just need to get these people out. Like you're not even making logical sense. Like you just hate a team just to hate them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's our guy down at uh LSU coach Sean? Oh no no you go which I one got uh LSU guy Matt uh, 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 uh Matt Moscano yeah oh <laughs> that clown yeah. too he's just like man you just a fanboy you you love Alabama more than you uh you hate Alabama more than you love LSU you know your own team yeah that is crazy it's a lot, it's a lot of that going on bro they it's hate Alabama so much. <laughs> Bro, but you know what, Let, bro? Talk about that for a second, because I said, you know what? Let me try this. Let me see if I can hate me a team more than my own team, because I have Tennessee friends. That's why I hate Tennessee. See, fellas, Tez, <laughs> Jay, I'm one of them dudes that rather lose to Auburn than lose to Tennessee. See, Brinsky hate Auburn. I, I, I can stand losing. I, I Auburn understand it. I am with you, coach. I hate Tennessee more than I hate Auburn. Tenne I, I understand out. it. Man, bro, because my Auburn friends, I still get along with them. We rib each other and have a good time. Tennessee fans, bro, they different, and then, bro. And then we never snitched on y'all, like, feel <laughs> 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 Exactly. Man, so, you know, with the Tennessee thing, brother, I said, let me see if I can just hate them. More than I worry about my team. And I can't do it. I'm still worried about my team. I worry so much about my own squad. Yeah. I don't understand how – I tried it, bro. They, you know, he's definitely <laughs> one of those guys. If, like, in other words, I'm going to play terrible against Oklahoma. We mm -hmm. play terrible, right? I cannot even force my energy to worry about 
whether Auburn won or Auburn lose or Tennessee won. Or I'm so pissed off by how bad we played. So, you know, and, and that's why uh, – who did we lose to? It was Vandy that day. Uh, Tess, who did y'all lose to that day? Same day. Because I think y'all lost to somebody that day too. <laughs> we, we lose played. Day, we had a bye week. <laughs> Duh, they lose to everybody. Man, oh, cut it out. No, 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 because we played Georgia right after. Georgia just <laughs> came off. Right <laughs> what, what, what week was that? i tell you who we played. Week five. Uh, I don't know. South Carolina? That. No. No, we didn't play South Carolina. It, That's right. It, right. it might have been, been Oklahoma. Let me, week five. Let me check real quick. Because it was a reason why I asked that. Hold on. Because it was a reason why I said that. This is why I hate Auburn fans so much. Both lost. Yeah. Hey, Y'all played Oklahoma time, that day. Y'all played yeah, play Oklahoma. Oklahoma. He was right. And the way they lost. Right. The way they lost. They were so happy that we won, uh, We lost that they just said, oh, forget all about that. It would have made me feel better <laughs> if, see, like. <laughs> but see, Brisky, this is what I be trying to get you to understand. It's both sides. That same thing that you said, they're Alabama fan. I know you don't want to believe it, <laughs> but it's some <laughs> Alabama know. fans out there that that hey, they worry about Alabama more than they worry about their own. I mean, more about Auburn more than they worry, Auburn. worry about their own team. I don't know. I, there's, I promise, there's, but I don't know. There's some there's some people right now. I guarantee you, you went to their Facebook page and took an audit. The word Auburn. Is up there more than the word <laughs> Alabama. I can guarantee it. And y'all know I ain't lying. Yeah. <laughs> like, every fan base got fans like that. Like yeah. Yeah. some of the fans that you're talking about, I be I'm they cringe worthy than me. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, so it yeah, goes away. That's, that, that's a good point, man. <laughs> and it made me think about myself. I do the same thing with Bama State, you know. I, I right. that's the only thing. Do I don't hate Bama State much as I do Tennessee, but <laughs> I use Bama State name a lot. <laughs> Bama State, Bama State, because I got a lot of Bama State homies. And Bama. man, from high school ball, from you know, I use their name a lot. I just enjoy when they lose because you know I, I rib them. It ain't even per, it ain't even angry like Tennessee. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I just I, I just don't I can't do nothing well, Tennessee. I'm gonna have to take. Take back what I just said, because I know Ski been kind of uh, down. Like how we ain't been ski the way we. What I'm saying, <laughs> so we ain't been ski. Alabama State this week, I believe. Don't so you? anytime Alabama yeah. State loses, oh boy, I, I make sure they have it, boy. I'm, it's the greatest boy, day. I make sure they have it. facts. It's like oh. a birthday. Now, yes. well, let me let me let me not just put so much on Auburn fans, because I know I be going. Yeah. Ooh, I do the well, same thing I, with Bama State. Same I, thing. I, I let Bama State folks have it. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And we're gonna yeah, be beat right. y'all for Turkey Day classes. So boom. Facts. I'm pulling for y'all too. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Anybody old Bama State. The last one, and then we can uh talk about Heisman. Which Maxwell, I always think that Maxwell is like somewhat part of the Heisman too. So you pretty much got an idea whoever win this award is pretty much gonna win the Heisman. It's very rare one person win the match well and the other person yeah. win the highest. Win the highest, yeah. Who I, I can tell you right now, Dylan Gabriel better not win this award <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if he wins this award, it may be a right. But at talking about player of the year, come on now, stop it. But it's between Travis and uh Genty. My answer is Genty, man, because he's the team. I believe you can still win. Um, uh, uh, Shador is really the most valuable player on Colorado. Travis is the uh, best player. The best yeah. player, but Shador is the most valuable of them all. Genty is literally that team. I'm not saying they're they going to uh, – like I said, man, they was three points away from beating uh, Oregon, the number one team in the country. Ed Boys, that's literally right. they only lost all year. Right. And he's his, of course, one more time to show the people <coughs> yards after contact is leading everybody in the nation and it's week 11. This is amazing. Right. That's crazy. So who you guys got? 
So well, pretty much, me. I know I know what y'all Heisman pick gonna be just off this award. That's how I say uh -huh. it. it pretty much go together. So that's my Heisman pick too. <laughs> For me, uh, um, if I could get, I'll oh, go ahead, Ted. You go ahead. You go ahead. Oh no, now you go. You go. Go, go for it. Go for it. I still got to get it together. <laughs> For me, man, when I think of Maxwell, and you tell me that's the player of the year. Yes, to me, Gentry is the best running back. He gonna win the dope. His stats are outstanding. But if you talk about player of the year, right? You got a guy that's good on offense, playing 100 players a game, good on defense, excelling at both. The only player in college football that will catch a touchdown, turn around and catch an interception in the same game. Clearly has changed the momentum of several games he's played. And then ran a punt, uh, a kick, was a punt or kick? Ran a special team touchdown back. Just the other day, just that game they lost. I, I think it was a uh... – It was a – it probably was a punt. I think it was a punt. It was a punt. Okay. Was a punt. So this guy punt return touchdowns, interception ran that back, helps. wide helps. receiver touchdown. Like to me, there is no better player overall. Player, I agree with Jay Walk said though. If you take him on one side, he might not be the best. If you take him at you know one or the other, he might not. It might be other people better than him at that position. But to see everything this dude is doing. And I don't even remember nobody doing it. Charles Woodson done some of this, some of this. Um, been several players that done a few. But to play defense, catch interception, all those plays, turn around, play wide receiver. If you play, if y'all play ball, you know one side of the ball, you be like, bro, mm, bro. I can't even imagine to y'all playing receiver and turn around playing defensive back, bro. Do you know what kind of shit you to be able to do that? Man, that's that that. So for me, the player of the year has got to be Travis Hunter, man. Mm -hmm. If you don't give him this award, damn, you know what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. Genty is awesome. All that is the best. He's the best running back, right? But I would argue if there's other running backs that can that may not be as successful as Genty, may not have the stats Genty got, right? But I would say if you put my man from Ole Miss with Ohio State and give him the carries, don't let him share, he would do just he 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 would do just almost just as well as Gentry in that offense. Twelve personnel, he would do just as well. I don't know nobody in college football that can catch a touchdown, catch an interception, run punts back, run kids back, play all these plays, and still not get no credit. I think this Player of the Year has got to go to Travis Hunter. To me, hey, you, hey, they need you as a salesperson for you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a good one. Uh, you, you had me. Yeah. And see, man, it's I'm, difficult, I'm a, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm so, I'm a big Travis Hunter uh, fan, man. That's why I was like, just the only reason I said Jensen, I said, man, if he break just one of Barry Sanders' record, give him the Heisman, because you know yeah. how long them records been sitting up there. For 35 yeah. years, yeah. If and he breaks one, they might do it. Yeah, you yeah. gotta give him an award just off that alone. And Trav, that was like, man, it's a toss up, man. <laughs> that was I said, if I had to choose today, I'm still giving it to Gentry by a hair. It, it ain't like I'm just, oh, here you got yeah. the award by a large margin. It's gonna be one of the closest Heisman races, I believe, since like I think. Toby Gerhardt and uh Mark Ingram was the closest. It's gonna yeah, be like that. Yeah. one one of those closest yeah. ones that we have ever seen. Yeah. I just I just hope the hate for Dion and the dislike because there's still some people out there, man, that don't like how Dion do things. The old guard, if you will, don't like the jury and the, and they may hate on Travis because of that. You know, they we may say a lot hate. of that. Yeah, well, we can say my fault to cut you off, but I think a lot of that <laughs> with we got four brothers right here. We know a lot of that is racially motivated. <laughs> I mean, just to be honest, it really yeah, is. We just you being know, totally that's honest. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but hey, you know, I I don't like it, but it's not for racial reasons. I I just don't like it because it put a target on your back. 
Facts. You know, That's it's, true. It's, I'm the it's same. Reason, I'm the same. It's the reason why players take a sh- take shots at them and stuff like that. And, and, and a large yeah. part of that is how they present themselves. But that's a whole different conversation. Well, facts, man, you know, facts, they were hating on Prime. I like Prime talked that mess, but Prime backed it up on the field. You can't hate a man mm-hmm. for backing up on the field. You're right. But that's, that's what I'm saying. That's like the two rollies. Okay, not not like, maybe. Yeah. I'm saying when you're gonna do that though, it's like yeah. We we're talking about we're an eight win team now, but at the beginning of the year, we're talking about a mediocre team that, yeah. that's behaving and putting a target on your back as if you are a you, you know what I mean? Like people getting we're up for that. Colorado, like they are national champions. Like you don't need you need to go under the radar. You need to sneak another win. You don't need everybody's best game. You're not yeah. that good of a team. So you need to calm it down a little bit. So that's that's my only knock with it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a lot of those guys, really like, yeah, it. of course. I'm not, I'm all for it. If you're going to talk that mess now and Man. you lose, hey, you 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 warn all this um, criticism, criticism right yeah. behind it. But if they win, I don't want you to try to dress it up like, Oh, look at them looking like thugs or whatnot. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, like no, that's Travis. Cool. They talking like Travis. At one point, I forgot what reporter it was, and he was just talking like Travis is a thug or something. And this dude is the and most unthug person I ever seen. Go fishing. The go nice go kid, a four point yeah. student. Yeah, and just play video games. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? How I would act if I had Travis on the ability. Yes, I I know exactly how you would act to yes. I'd be yeah. insufferable. <laughs> we know. <laughs> like, we know. I think we all act like that. Man, come on. Yeah, like think Tens about it. Man. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be insufferable, bro. Like he is a very humble kid to be very that humble that kid, football. man. Man, yeah. it, it, if that's the type of man that married uh, your daughter, you would be proud. That's literally all he does is literally fish, play video games. He's a 4.0 student, and he balls out. If that's all he does, yeah. man, please. If that was my son, I am extremely proud. Can't marry my daughter. Extremely proud. Who are you picking, Jason, before we get to these right? Well, I mean, I, I mean, Coach Sean really hit all the points, you know. I don't think we've ever seen a level of stamina from a player Thanks, like this ever. You know, because it's the level of, of of play doesn't drop off. No matter you know on defense, they just went on. They were just on an eleven play, twelve play drive. It doesn't yeah. matter. You still get the exact same fresh Travis Hunter every yeah. single down. Yeah. I mean, he does. What he's doing, I don't. It, it's going to be hard to to replicate, and I think okay. he, he has a better chance of winning this because I do think that GT can slide in there and actually win the Heisman. You know, if he does break a couple more records, but Travis is doing something that's ex- extremely, extremely rare, and so you know, I think we need to live in that moment. I think he should be celebrated for what he's doing. He's 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 good on both sides of the ball. And he still finds time to wear a onesie and make TikToks. Uh-huh. He, he deserves it. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, he hey, deserves Jason. It the right way, man. You got to, as a coach, you got to have some uh, cojones to play your player like that, to do all yeah. that extra stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I'm only leaning on the experts because they did it in college, like uh, the Richard Sherman's, the Champ yeah. Bailey's. They said he's not going to be able to do this in the NFL. He's going to have to – it's going to be in some packages. Champ was very stern on it. When they asked him the question, he was like, he has to choose. What are you going to do? Like, if you want yeah. to be a cornerback, you have to be a cornerback. But you can come in there in, like, little packages at wide receiver. But if you think you're about to – okay, I'm yeah. about to line up at cornerback and I'm about to go against – Jamar Chase, Jordan Jefferson, uh, Devontae Adams, and then I'm going to uh, jump on wide receiver and I got to go against Pat Sertan, Sauce Gardner, or Jalen Ramsey, you out of your mind. That is not about to happen. These are grown yeah. men. This yeah. is not about to happen. And it, and I, had that same conversation. I had that same conversation with the – I probably shouldn't say who, but a, a 
Hall of Fame NFL player. We had this same conversation. I don't know if people want me to say his name, but no, man, don't he essentially call. said he, he won't be able to do this because of the level of physicality that comes yeah. with playing in the NFL, right? So you can get away with, you know, taking a playoff, taking two plays off, yeah. you know, in college because, you know, you're going, you, you're, there's going to be a play where you're going up against somebody who's going to be an accountant at some point. Yeah, inferior, uh, facts. That, I yeah, know that right. person. That's fact. <laughs> but when you go to the NFL, <laughs> it's a different monster, and you right. you going against somebody who want to whoop your ass every play. Yes, who I wants to I, who wants to be physical with you every single play, and they're going to make it a point to try to make an example out of him if he right. is trying to play on both sides of the ball. They're just going to try to run him into the ground. They're going to try to hurt him. Yeah, like, I think that's I just think the way that, the NFL. Is. I think the coaching. I think the coaches. You, you, you talking about, you know the best defensive coordinators in the world uh, with the yeah. best talent in the world, the best offensive coordinators in the world with the best talent in the world. Uh, I can see him going to the NFL, and if they take that approach, then a team trying to make him make every single play. So we're going to throw it to him every single time, whether he's on offense or defense. You're going to have to make a play the entire game on both sides of the football, uh, and we'll see. We'll take our chances with it. And, with the athletes in the NFL, I don't think you you want to do that. Yeah. You can't really do it in college because, like, in college, there's not a lot of teams where you got receivers across the board that are just super amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the NFL, you're going to run into all these teams, even the third-ranked receivers, 4-3 guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? In, in a grown man. In college – you usually have one receiver and the other ones are kind of mediocre. You can kind of try to hide him. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, but in the NFL, you're not going to be able to do that. It's going to be you can't athleticism hide. all over the field. And if you chase Tyreek Hill on nine routes all over, all over the field, they come back and expect you to get in the game at receiver with Jalen Ramsey lined up on the other side. Mm-hmm. Man, it's just not going to work. <laughs> yep. You know what they're going to do. As soon as they play the Dolphins, first play of the game, they're going to send Tyreek on the nine. The next play yeah. of the game, they're going to send Waddle on the nine. Whoever yeah. in front of them, they're going to send him on the nine. <laughs> like, yeah. and matter of fact, Jason, I meant to ask you this one time because your brother, my cousin, played in the NFL for nine seasons. Has Frank ever said anything about Travis doing this? Yeah. we we act, You know, funny thing about it, we talked about it yesterday. <laughs> Talked about it yesterday, and he essentially is like packages. Right. He would love to see him be able to do it full time, and and he does think that a GM and a coach are going to allow Travis to try to do it full time. But I don't. He doesn't think the experiment is essentially going to work. This is another NFL player for nine seasons. Shout out to Frank Walker, ladies right. and gentlemen. Oh, the illustrious Tuskegee University. I just had to throw that out there, too. <laughs> the HBCUs don't get a lot of love. Man. Those type of guys in the NFL, especially playing that long. So, man. I promise, yeah, man. Somebody call us a hater for that. Oh, well, man. I think I, – that's why I said anytime – if Champ Bailey, a Hall of Famer, said that I am going to listen to the Hall of Famer that played it at a yeah. high level, Richard Sherman, who is going to be a Hall of Famer, said that I'm going to listen to him. And I think, Jason, you said it, and I, Tiz, I think you said it about him playing wide receiver. Like, he's okay. Like, if it was yeah. a list, I'll leave him off. I'm like, yeah, he's he cool. But he said yeah. he, he, thought it was, he thought it was kind of bland on the wide receiver end. So yeah. that wasn't a knock at him because you still that guy. Well, I, I, I think, man, if I'm if I'm an NFL GM, I'm looking at man, this guy's playing 100 snaps every game. If I can get him in that corner, I got a corner that's not going to get tired at all. Mm-hmm. I got a corner that's going to be at 100 percent the entire game, whether we go into overtime or not. <laughs> uh, because if he can play 100 snaps a game, then he can play an NFL game at corner and and not get tired at all. I think he'll be 
whatever position he decides to play, specifically if you play corner, I think he'll be better at it than he is in college. Mm -hmm. if, he, sure. if, if he sticks to one side of the ball. For sure. How much more efficient can he be at 60 snaps versus 100? Oh, That's how I look at it. He's, yeah. Even if, even if he was, you know, I, I still I want to throw up sometimes because I really do feel like if, if there wasn't a prime, he'd be a t he'd be on the crimson tide. And I really like to think like, what if? <laughs> we just talking about that. What if he played on just one side of the ball and could just solely focus on one side? Of, like, how good would he actually be? On time with tell. I think he's gonna be cornerback, but you Thanks guys, so. these. <laughs> Brought to you, the college football playoff rank. Brought to you by On3. Shout out to them. Uh, definitely shout out to uh, On3. You guys need to hire my boy Ty Hayes. Superstar. Thanks. Because I don't want to see my boy get off YouTube. Josh Pate. Thanks, man. Definitely. Man, that's, we'll talk about that later. Oh, man. But uh, – we got Oregon still at number one. We got Ohio State, Texas, Penn State, Notre Dame, uh, Miami, Georgia, Tennessee, SMU, Indiana, Boise, Clemson, and Alabama is the first team they got left out. This is going to be an interesting next two weeks. I, me personally, I said I don't. I think most Alabama fans just like. I don't believe these boys deserve to be in the college football playoffs, and I am one of them. So I think majority of us uh, feel that way. Um, we may sneak in there. I, I I wouldn't be mad at it if we did, but I don't think we deserve to be in there. But um, what's y'all thoughts on these uh, rankings? Mm -hmm. So when, when I'm looking at this, I'm I, – I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with the rankings, but I think what's what's interesting to, to note is that when you're looking at this, you got to consider that the five uh, power four, power however you want to say it, those teams are going to get in there. The low, the fifth rank uh, conference champion is going to get in there, and you know where they rank, so they're going to jump some of these teams. It, you know. Uh, a Clemson might not get in there when we talk about the playoff scenario. Because if Iowa State win out, then they'll probably get that spot as the highest rate uh, conference champion, the fifth highest rate conference champion. They just take them where they rank that. So that's kind of something to think about when you're looking at this list is that yeah. 12 spot is still not secure at all mm -hmm. uh, because somebody could get bumped out of there by Iowa State or, or BYU or whoever win that. You know, what I mean, they go, they guarantee the spot. Um, so it's it's weird. It's weird. This is the first time. Yeah. The only the only experience I got from the college football playoff is playing the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but other than that, you know, this is the first year for everybody. So, uh -oh. me, bro. After that Oklahoma game, bro. Really, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, man. I say it right here. After we lost to Vanderbilt, bro, I knew. Like, I, I ain't one of these fans that's going to – like, I don't really tell the truth a lot. Uh, well, I, let me take that back. I, I don't I don't tell the whole truth on my there channel you because, you know, I, 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 I don't like spoiling your dreams. Like, I don't want to just – Okay, let's say let's say Jason and Tez are mechanics. You will understand when I say this. So these guys know everything about a car. Like they know they 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 know much more than I know about a car. Jason and Tez is watching a guy fix a car. They knowing that the dude didn't put the wrong pistons in. He ain't putting no O-rings. That I may not even know what the hell that he doing, but they see it. They know. They see it. So when the cars get ready to race each other, and the car that they watch. Stop. I'm over there like, why, why the car stop? I'm panicking. They sitting there like this because they already know. They may not say it, but they already know why. Bro, we don't have an identity, bro. We don't have an identity. 
this defensive scheme to me is not transitioning to teams that run the football. We're one of the worst teams in the SEC against the run. We're not – our offensive coordinator, for some reason, is allergic to the running game. Right, we're using our quarterback way too damn much. It's way too damn predictable. Every other team in the history of the SEC knows what we're going to do. Vanderbilt laid a great blueprint of how to beat us. Right, pinning and pulling with option schemes, backside blocks. We don't defend that very well. And now with Deontay Lawson out, we damn sure don't defend it very well. Bro, after we lost Oklahoma, that's when the damn broke for me. We we if we go, thank God. I'm going to be on the front row cheering. But, bro, we have – this is just the honest to God knows truth, man. The truth is in the details. Damn we have you. way too many deficiencies, bro. Every team that we play in the playoff from here on out will have a defensive – everybody except for Miami. Every other team we play, even SMU, will be able to do the same thing that Oklahoma did to us on defense. You're not playing these teams like LSU no more, whose defense is just yeah. worse. It's worse. Every team you play will defensively have the skill to stop that quarterback counter read unless you come with something different. And we've proven that we're not going to come with nothing different. Mm -hmm. Jace McClellan had 180 carries at this time last year. They don't even have 180 together, Jam and Justice, right now. You know what I mean? We just don't run the ball. We're not physical. People don't understand really quickly – when you do a lot of passing and you go three and out, three and out, three and out, that throw your whole offensive line out of sync. It throw your whole offense out of sync. Offensive linemen like to run the ball. They like to run block, lean on people, man. They don't like pass blocking, right, because you're letting people tee off on them. So I I would love to go to the playoff, bro, but I don't I, – I, I, this team got way – I don't never know which team I'm going to get, man. I, I never know which team I'm going to get. You know, Nick Sheridan might want to go out there and have Jalen throwing the ball 45 times again. Again, You just never know, bro. We got all this talent and we just don't utilize it, bro. So, really quickly, if Oregon or anybody in that top five lose, it ain't going to help us because they just going to keep them in the top 12. We oh. need for Clemson to lose. South Carolina may beat them. Um, you would have to have somebody around us lose for us to stay in that realm so i just don't know how it's gonna work out bro they need alabama in this first playoff because alabama is gonna travel they know alabama gonna pack the house they would like to get teams in this first playoff who gonna pack the seats sell tickets and 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 rent out all the hotels don't make no mistake about it money is a part of it make no mistake about it um yeah. after that tcu blunder some a lot of people got fired behind that t putting tcu in over alabama and empty seats, didn't sell out all the tickets, people leaving early. Georgia beat them 60 something to Man, whatever it was. Which, which I which I made note, Coach. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you good, bro. That uh Ohio State and Georgia game was the national championship. When Pretty they much. missed the field goal, I immediately said, Congratulations, Georgia. You are the national champions. And it was some folks that were like, Man, they still gotta play TCU. I said, man, I'm willing to bet whatever, whatever. Them boys are not about to lose to TCU. Matter of fact, they may annihilate them. Game come up. Oh, actually, I won some money because somebody was stupid enough to bet. Georgia mm -hmm. scored the first. Then TCU come back down and score like 7-7. Seven, seven. Then the man texts me and like, you about to see an upset tonight. I mean, the second he did that, the rest is history. <laughs> you see what happens, man. So yeah, you can't make that mistake again. Yeah, and 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 so I, I don't know, man. I would love to go to the playoffs, bro. I'm a Bama fan. I would love to go to the playoffs, but right now, bro, I just think this team got too much deficiencies. I think they even need to focus on Auburn. They need to focus on a hot Auburn team who finally catching their stride. They need to focus on this. Focus on your seniors, bro. That SHIT y'all pulled last week, you owe your seniors for that, bro. You mm -hmm. owe, and I'm talking about coaches and all. That was a weak coaching. I'm talking about Kevin DeBoer. I'm talking about Nick Sheridan. I'm talking about Kane Womack. That was a weak. We, you know Brent Venerables had a whole week. You know he go, he watched the LSU game. You know they're going to be ready. They had, you they, Safety's <laughs> all the way up in the damn box, bro. They're not worrying about y'all throwing the ball. Bro, I'm – how how do you not have something you could go to 
to counteract the quarterback counter, the quarterback counter. You see, you got safeties all the way up on the hashes, man. Throw the damn ball. Like, I don't understand, bro. So not, so I would love to see us, but I just don't think I don't I don't I don't know how that's gonna work out. I just say it like that. I don't know how it's gonna work out. Jason, how you liking this uh playoff ranking? It, it's definitely interesting. I think I saw the bracket when they had like Arizona State in. Yeah. And so that yeah. I should, yeah, Arizona State is in, and that's what? like, okay. I think All right. they win the conference. So they're, they're, the, they're the first conference champion. They, that's that's what I'm saying. That, mm-hmm. that this so Arizona State is imagine, not going to stand like that. If they, we they, don't, man. What the world? Exactly. But what, yeah, well, they control it's, their own it's destiny. Weird. It, yeah, it's weird. It's weird, and you know, I wonder how much more weird it's going to get when they move to 14. Like, oh. at, are at they moving to 14? Yeah. Supposed to move to fourteen in like two years, I think. Yeah, it is. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's strange. I mean, the only team that that I think could end up getting TCU'd is Indiana. Mm-hmm. I think last week kind of showed us that you know they they're the weak link. At least you know so far they're they're the weak link. You know, I think everybody else kind of deserves to be there. We we mm. don't necessarily deserve to be there, but I do think that we will probably get in just for the financials. And the the wild oh. thing about it is that I the reason I hate this team so much is because they're the worst type of team. If we go play Oregon today, we'll beat the hell out of them. If we go play Indiana, it'll look <laughs> like the Oklahoma game. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most frustrating. What are we doing? Man? Unless frustrating, bro. Unless yes. we coming off a bye. If we come off a bye, we're the best team in in, a, in America. In in America, <laughs> for some reason, if you give Caleb, you know, my boy Kalen Debo a week, he he turns into Superman. But I mean, a lot. We 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 don't deserve to be there as much as I want us to be there. And I think if we get in there, we. Problem. We might win it all because we're going to be ranked so low that we're going to only have to play really, really good teams. So, in fact, I think we're going to roll and get whipped. I do. We, I don't we think get, we, for some reason, we get up for good teams. We just we we play down to competition, and that's the worst type we of do. team that you can be. We do, man. That's a whole fact. Yeah. Yes. Who you uh got? Well, I did. Uh, wait, how you feel about it before we uh? So, I'm, so the list. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm looking at it. It. I don't have a big issue. I don't see any glaring issues on the list. Um, what's interesting? I did look up the bracket. So if you if you're looking at this list, the five guaranteed teams that they have right now: Oregon, Texas, Miami. To win the ACC, Boise State uh, guaranteed a spot, and then they have Arizona State for winning the Big 12. So they would come in at number 12. So actually, mm-hmm. Clemson is the first team out of this playoff scenario, and Alabama mm-hmm. would be the second team. So y'all would okay. need an ACC team to lose, probably like a, you're looking Man. at maybe an SMU or somebody like that, oh. somebody to drop a game. Mm-hmm. Well, my, they got Miami as a conference champion. Hold on, so. SMU is in uh, ACC. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. That's how trash it is this year. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I never. And, uh, okay. and then, and then you would probably need another team. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know a scenario. Of course, it is one, but but for y'all to get in. But if you think about it, if it, if y'all get in. And y'all at 12, that means that according to this, you have to play the number two team in their building. So then you'll be at Ohio State, your first round playoff game. Is that a game that y'all confident in? Because the first round games are at at the the venue, mm-hmm. you know, they're not neutral site. Yeah, they're yeah, they're they'll be in a way. So that's game a big that's that. a big thing. Yeah, we essentially need Tennessee to lose. Yeah. Van so the, the first round here they have Tennessee the at they have Tennessee at Georgia, right? 
uh, Arizona State at Ohio State, SMU at Notre Dame, and Indiana at Penn State. Tennessee at Georgia is a very interesting game. If you give him a rematch, I think it's going to be different. I do too. And I think that's a scary thing for uh, Georgia. You never want – it's hard to beat a team twice in a season. Yeah. yeah. They get it in so their building, though. So, they get I think it in their Georgia building. would dump truck their ass the second time. <laughs> no, well, well, what, what am I not surprised by that answer? <laughs> I swear I do, bro. Yeah. I, 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 I honestly think if Georgia get in this tournament, they're going to be a problem. I just really do. I don't Ooh. think Carson Beck ain't going to play bad no more. Not like to, he's been playing. Their running game is finding their feet right now. Their defense always going to be okay. If you notice, everybody was talking about how UMass put up points on them. Man, they was – if you look what – they was being so vanilla. Oh, my God. They was, they was had, they had a lot of young – they was rotating a lot of people. I saw exactly what Kirby was doing. They were not there trying to throttle them. They wanted to just get out of that game get and get to this Georgia Tech game, the same team that beat Miami, you know. Um I saw it, man. They just trying to cruise, cruise control and, and and sort of like we did Oklahoma a year, a couple of years back with, with Kyler Murray when Tua was playing. Get up on them, beat them real good, and then you start rotating people. You start running the ball three and out. Oklahoma scored a couple of touchdowns, and the game don't look as bad as it really, really was, you know. I know this going to be the last little bit, you know, before we get up out of here. Of course, it's rivalry week. Oh, okay. good so, job! So, no issues, man. You, we just <laughs> we ain't gonna go, we ain't gonna go into depth on these games. It's really just picking them. Just, <laughs> just, a, just a just a few rivalry games. We already know what's gonna be the last game we're gonna pick from, but we're just gonna go just through a couple. Real quick. Do uh, do we even got to pick that game? We already know where everybody's staying. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why. I, I want to hear why, though. I like I I hear what y'all say. Why. Well, no, okay, how about there. this? When we, when, we, when we get to that game, everybody say who is their key player, and then, of course, we're going to say who's going to win that game. So when we get to that game, we know what game we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Michigan, mm-hmm. Ohio State. Who you guys got winning? I, I just, think Ohio State going to dump oh, truck Michigan. Ohio State. Yeah. Jason. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't. I, it better be Michigan. Ohio. Michigan. I, I refuse. I refuse. And you know why I refuse. I refuse. I know why you refuse. But I'm still going Ohio State, man. They're not Boy, losing. They they lose Michigan Friday, win this Michigan game. Friday. I'm going about, Michigan, man. What about to say Michigan win this game? Who they play oh, They going to implode. No, they playing in Ohio State. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, one of the most interesting games, uh, uh, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. Tennessee mm. on the road to Vanderbilt. If Tennessee, I got uh, Vanderbilt winning this game. I think they can pull it off. That game could be sketchy. That game could mm. be sketchy. If Tennessee, but I think, I think people are catching up with that option now. I think it's yeah. enough film yeah. on it that people are starting to catch up with it. I think it'll be a good game, but I think. Tennessee is just too good on defense, man. I think yeah. Tennessee wins that game. Yeah, I agree. I think Tennessee wins, just kind of like Coach Sean said. Since they've been winning and playing in big games and winning, people are more focused on watching Facts. Tennessee now. So mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to go Tennessee. I won't. I would prefer Vanderbilt. I'm going to go Tennessee. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Me too, bro. I'm going I'm gonna go with Tennessee. I want to see Vanderbilt win that game just for the dramatics, man. Yeah, man. but but I think I think they get ahead early, man. And, and I don't think yeah, it's gonna get interesting. Yeah, I don't think they built to come back. So facts. Um, uh, yeah, another uh, good game: South Carolina, Clemson. Now that one, one, that that's a good game. I I have to me. I have South Carolina. I think South Carolina can go in there and uh, upset them. I think so too. I'm going Clemson. Ooh, Tess? I'm going South Carolina. Okay, Brisky, do you have South a point? Kind of hot right now, bro. They, I would want to play South Carolina right now. They hot. Two and a half point favorite Clemson. Four and a half. Oh yeah, I'm definitely two and a half. Oh, two and a half. 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm taking Clemson with the points. I was about to say, mm-hmm. where where is it? Like it really matter? <laughs> oh, Clemson, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely in South Carolina for both. <laughs> Clemson. Uh, what? I'm just trying to see if there's any other interesting ones. Oh, well, the night game, of course. Texas Florida, and Florida, Texas Florida. and them, they playing in College uh-huh. Station at night mm. Mm. with uh, Hurt Quinn Ewers. But you got Arch Manning coming out there. But this is one of those games on the road, SEC at night with uh, SEC championship berth on the line. I believe Texas somehow gets up out of there by the skin of their teeth. But they're going to be – it's going to be scary. It's going to be scary. I'm going Texas a and to beat them Saturday. Mm. Texas A&M mm-hmm. going that, – that game, I had to learn and do my history. That game is a very intense rivalry that they hadn't mm. played in years. Mm. Them fans is going to be butt noodle banana Saturday night for Texas. <laughs> I didn't realize Texas A&M and Texas hated each other that much. Oh, they I did. I did my research. They come in the – remember that game against uh, LSU? How Texas A&M, I think Texas A&M is going to come to play Saturday. They're going to lay it all on the line. You're going to find out what that 12th man all about that day. Yeah, Ooh, I think wait. so. I forgot, I forgot the thing on uh, YouTube. They got an awesome YouTube channel, and it's like uh, about robberies or what. Now, they do a whole bunch of other things like this versus this team. That I watched a video on them about them and Texas A&M and why they're not playing, why they haven't played. And, of course, it was dealing with money and all that type of stuff. But, boy, this one going to be that one. This going to be that yeah. one. Yeah. Who you I'm, got, Joe? I'm with Coach Young. I think Texas A&M, Ooh. I think they have the tools necessary. I think they're going to try to get out early and run the ball and just keep the ball away from Texas as much as possible. So I, I'm taking Texas A&M. Me too. Uh, I, I would want to pick Texas A&M because it will make my team look better. But uh, I'm going to go with Texas. We'll go with Texas. I think just based on the game that I saw Texas and them play against us, uh, while I think we have a, a good defense, I think particularly in the front seven, Texas defense up front is much better than ours. Um, yeah, I, I think Texas, if if you got a healthy Quinn Ewers, I think that they win this game. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, to end the show. The good old Iron Bowl, the hatred rivalry, the team that I can't stand. I I hate their fans. I hate their trees. I hate everything about them. But I'm going to let everybody go first. Uh, a matter of fact, I'm going to let the lone Auburn fan go. Who is the guy to watch it? Who you got winning? Who is the guy to watch and who I got winning? All right. So I got Auburn winning this game, of course. Uh, who, who, is the guy, who is the guy to watch? Well, everybody is going to be watching DeMarcus Riddick because of obvious reasons. He, 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 got, he put some eyes on himself. But I would say the guy to watch, key to this game, is uh, 27, man. Tarquez. Uh, y'all, y'all seem vulnerable against the run. Uh, if we can put together some rushing yards, man, with a young man who is one of the best backs in the SEC, um, and uh, take care of the football, uh, I think we can provide some problems for y'all. Uh, I think our defense is, I mean, as good a defense as y'all, y'all played all year. Uh, young, but still good. Uh, so, and I don't know. It just depends. There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot of factors in this game. It's like I'm, I ask myself when I think about this game: Is Alabama going to do anything different on offense? Because if they're not going to do anything different on offense, then I really like our chances to win this game. Um, right. But yeah, that, that's who I say watch out for. Twenty seven, man. Uh, Jason, who you who you got winning? Who and who's your guy to watch out for? 
Yeah, I mean, I I have Alabama winning, right? I think that's a given. No, but my my <laughs> person to watch out for is um is actually Peyton Horny Thorny. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton Horny Thorny. <laughs> Peyton Horny Thorny. He, I mean, you know, it's we for, we forget about last year's game, right? And how close they were, and what they what Hugh Freeze did with Peyton Thorn last year is exactly what is killing us this yeah. year, right? So I think. <sighs> It's really going to be on – Womack is going to have to put four people on the defensive line all the time. Like, that's just – it just is Man. what it is, right? Like, let's let's get out of whatever you think this this swarm defense is because it's, it's not working. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's going to come down to limiting Thorne, especially after last week's performance from Jackson Arnold. Peyton Thorne could easily replicate that. He did it last year. He really gave people a blueprint last year what to kind of do. So that's who I'm, I'm picking as my impact player and is what we do against him to slow that that run offense down from, from the quarterback perspective specifically. So, oh, sure. Take Quick side in. note, Texas a and is 5-1 and one at home, only losing to Notre Dame the first game of the season. It's the only game they lost <laughs> at home. Yeah. Oh, All year. <laughs> So they 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 coming, but oh, yeah, um, they might be rocking. For me, um, it's very simple for me, dog. The guy, the people I'm watching is two people. Could care less about the defense. You know, I'm an offensive guy. Mm -hmm. Nick Sheridan and Jalen Miro. Mm -hmm. How do these two? Which which set of these guys will we get? Which which set will we get? The Oklahoma set, or will we get the the? LSU said, or the 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 Georgia first half said. I mean, w w I personally believe this man. That was a very humbling loss Saturday. The worst that I can even remember as far as with stakes on the line. Yeah, we got our ass kicked by Clemson a few years ago with Mike Loxley and them. But I think we was already in the playoffs then. You know, we was already in San Jose, California, playing. This was to go. This was for everything. And to go out there and lay an egg and not even score a touchdown. They have heard about it this week probably more than any, uh, probably more than Vanderbilt. I think the seniors playing for the seniors is going to mean something to these guys Saturday. This is a lot of those guys, a lot of time, This a lot of those guys last time ever playing in Bryant Denny. And I think these dudes come out with their hair on fire, bro. I'm telling you. Um, talk to Brian Ray, daddy, and they, they, they hot. They they they. It's sad that you got to get beat up on TV to, to get you back focused. In a sideways weird way, that loss may have saved us this Saturday because if we had beat Oklahoma, we may have laid that egg this Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Getting beat like that on national TV and seeing all the pundits on them. And remember, this is the seniors' last time playing in that stadium, bro. I and then the young man from Auburn saying all that stuff. They. They going I believe Alabama could potentially put together one hell of a game Saturday, man. I really, really do. This grabbed their attention. They have to focus now. They have to be. So I'm picking Alabama to win this game, man. I'm picking Alabama to win this game handily. I prom I, I really when I say handily, I ain't talking about 42 to 10. I'm talking about like 28-17 type thing. Do they come? Do you think they cover the 12 and a half? I do. I do. I think mm -hmm. Alabama's going to come out balling. I really do. Okay. One of those normal home games, like when we play Auburn. Now, this was at Jordan Hare. I may feel differently. Oh, <laughs> yeah. like I know I would. Well, it's totally yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, but I really believe with how they play, bro, and letting their seniors down, they about to come out and get down, man. Mm. I really do. I really do. Well, of course, no surprise. Uh, I got Alabama winning. No, no surprise. No, 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 no surprise. No surprise. But my guy to watch is the guy that I literally seen in person win state his state championship game in Jordan Hare and destroy Auburn High School. It's Ryan Williams. 
because only because Riddick, he asked for that smoke, but he's not going to be on him, which is very yeah, detrimental to, to the uh, other guys. So, and they probably cussing him out inside the head, like they probably like yeah, 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 and all that or whatnot. Like yeah, we we with you, but in the back of their mind, like okay, be careful what you ask for. So we are gonna see, and the late great, the late great Harvey Updike once <laughs> said, "You know, yeah, that's yep. what he said. He said it, and I'm riding with him. I'm Them riding three. with him to the wheels fall out. Rest in peace to one of the most amazing people in Alabama history. History of the world. I got trees in my backyard. I don't care nothing about." Them trees. I don't care nothing about Tumor's Corner. I don't care nothing about that uh, bald eagle that y'all got. I don't care nothing. Coach Sean don't like Tennessee, but doggone it, I don't like y'all wasting toilet paper. I hate y'all. Oh, I, yeah. I hate Albany. I hate them colors. I hate everything about Auburn. I think we're going to go in there and we're going to put in a game plan. 35-14 Alabama, and that's speaking as a fan. Roll time. Fan. <laughs> Roll time. Man, I don't. I don't care. I throw out all the analysts when it comes to this week. It is. It, it just if I, fan me out. I don't care. I don't care. I believe. <laughs> fan you out. <laughs> just fan me out. I don't care. I believe. Like my I, man I, said. This man said. <laughs> I got a question for you. I Go ahead. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of related to what uh, Coach Young said. It, I mean, realistically. So I, he said, uh, you said that the the Oklahoma game, like they have to get up for this game now, coming off the Oklahoma loss. Oh, um, I, I want to ask, what, what was it about the the previous coach? Where he didn't need three games to get that message across. Mm -hmm. Where he can make one game feel just as important as this Oklahoma loss right here that they just had. Um, because he had the ability to do that. Like one game happened last year, right? Dropped the game to Texas. I don't know what his message was, but everybody said it's a completely different team down the stretch after that. Uh, you didn't see that so much from the Alabama team no more where it, they take that loss and they take it personal. And then the rest of the season is just like, we avenging that loss against everybody. Mm. So what do you think it is about the, the previous coach, I guess, that what, what, what messaging is he saying that's different from the messaging now in, in just one year? And I would like to correct you. Don't say previous coach. You say the GOAT when you talk previous about coach. <laughs> When you talk about you what you mean, he ain't there no put, more. You tell go first of all, we don't even really like you talking about nothing Alabama anyway. You should have no question. Don't nobody want to even answer your question. Look, you can go ahead and answer that's, that, Coach, and, and, we can, uh, and we can end the show. I mean, man, I just think, to be honest, and I hate to sound like the old guy, but it's the truth, bro. I played this game way too long. All the coaches who was nice and my buddy, I never done well, just the straight up honest truth. The coaches I had, Coach Towns, Coach Harris, Broderick, all they were straight a-holes, I always got down. All swag, always got down. And I'm not saying that's the case. These kids are different nowadays. It's just, man, I just don't think the sense of urgency is there like it used to be. I think we too wrapped up in other things outside of football that's garnering their attention. Anytime you can lose a football game and – Right after the game, be on TikTok, and I know the young act, the young people act like that's no big deal, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. My mind just can't fathom that. That's all I'm saying. When I lost, when we lost, I didn't, I didn't, I can't fathom losing the game like you lost, and be worried about social media. But I, it's a different day and different time, so I get it. I'm not the hater. I understand, fellas. I just honestly believe Kalen DeBoer is having to come. He's having a. Uh, what is it when 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 you 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 get in something and you realize whoa, this is different. 
You know, I think he's going through that right now. I can look at the man in his press conferences and it's written all over his face. He's he's really, you know, it's hitting him too. You ain't mm -hmm. in Kansas no more, bro. He, he, he it, learning what that it just means more. He's exactly, learning that yeah, on that's the job. exactly what it is. And it feels like it feels yeah, like from his own band, more it feels like the team is more player led now than yeah. coach led. And I'm glad that you brought that up, Tiz, because I I'm wondering how good of a leader is Jalen Milro really? Because I see I see a lot of front running. I see a lot of dancing when we score in touchdowns. But when on a three and out, I see him go to the sideline. I don't you don't see him ever say anything to anybody. He goes sit down and he pout. Listen, there's I, not I wonder about it. I wonder if, you know, and you know, you've written in college football, you really don't you, Pretty much gonna go as far as your quarterback go. That's a fact. So if your so, quarterback ain't the guy, and you know, like he, I feel I, sorry. I, I just him. really question his leadership ability. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. I really do, man, because I, I feel like he's. I feel like Jalen Miro is a quarterback who, who's. It's like trying to force a round peg in a square hole or a square yeah. peg in a round hole. Like he. If I let's take Diego Pavia for example, right? I think Diego Pavia is a lower tier version of Jalen Miro. If you put, I think if you put Jalen Miro in the offense where you ask him to do what Diego Pavia does, hand the ball off, make those reads, occasionally take shots down the field, he'll do that better than Diego Pavia would. But mm -hmm. it seems like. I'm telling you, it seems like they just – it's like you get a running quarterback, and it, I hate to relate this to a video game, but it's like you get a running quarterback on a video game and you have a playbook that's for a pass, a, a, a drop back pass. So instead of changing the playbook, you just call all the quarterback runs in that playbook. Hook that you got <laughs> like you don't know what to do with him like, you know what I mean I, I feel like he could be great just just not the system for him. yeah I'll tell you this too like, one last nugget go ahead. and this may not this may not mean nothing but it's just just me bro just me when I look back over the playing career the coach career we always won more when I was on the when even when I was a player I've had it both ways, man. You know, Coach Orange Boy used to be up in the booth. We sucked. When he was down the field talking to us, we were great. Um, even when I was coaching, when I was on the field, I could see who was scared. I could see who was frustrated. When I was up in the booth, I didn't know nothing. I'm just calling plays based on what I said. I like having my OC on the field, you know. And think back to this. Have we ever won a championship with an OC in the booth? We won with Sark on the field. We won with Kiffin on the field. When Sark was an analyst, whatever the case may be, we won with um, Probably Brian Dayball. Brian Dayball. Yeah, Day McElwain. Dayball probably. was on the field. I think Jim McElwain was in the but that probably the only one. Okay, McElwain. I know Dayball was on the field. Um, mm -hmm. I like having the OC on the field. Whenever we huddle, he over there letting us know, blah, 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 blah. I know they got the iPads and all this other stuff. I just rather had an OC on the field, bro. You know, that's just me. Just me. Mm. Yeah. It's been a great show. As always, my brothers, appreciate uh, Coach Sean coming on to the show. This won't be his last time. No, on sir. Here at no, all. Sir. But I had to have one of my guys up here. I know uh, everybody else busy. Shout out to the whole game. So many in the name. Ty, Coach Carl, uh, Jay, Jance. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. That, yeah, just so many. Um, now I say I'm drawing a blank on some of them. But y'all already know, of course, uh, shout out Jason and Tez. Always here helping me out. Appreciate you guys. Y'all pretty much. They ain't no pretty much. They all part of the show, so. Appreciate y'all as always. But everybody just go ahead, shout out channels and uh Instagrams and all that good stuff. Twitter or whatever. So we'll, I'll go to you last, Coach Carl. 
<laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, you can follow me at uh, Jason Bernard Official. I think that's my Instagram name. Yeah, Jason Bernard Official. Uh, for, for everything and anything that you need. I got nothing for nobody tonight. <laughs> Shout out to Twitter, too, man. Because you, you've you been going at it all day with Alabama football. Yeah, man, you've been pissing me off, man. I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. tired of, like, I, I'm just... I, I get it. People don't watch football the same as me. <laughs> and I get it. Like, I'm looking at nuances. They just looking at where the ball going. So, I, I, I but yeah, I think, uh, yeah. So, follow me on Twitter. It's Crowd Noise, Jaywalk. Um, you know, you guys can always catch me at every Atlanta Dream game. Oh, I'm always, I'm not doing this with you. What's up? Yeah, don't listen to him. Don't, 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 don't listen to him with his. <laughs> He's being funny. He doesn't like. He doesn't like the That's messed up, Ted. Yeah, it was, man. He yeah. didn't let you. It was wrong. He did me dirty. Hold on. <laughs> Bam. He did it today. Proto imagery, man, on all platforms. You can come check me out uh, for photography and all your graphical whatever needs. Um, I don't know. I don't have nothing to leave y'all with. I usually <laughs> have something uh, clever. Uh, only thing come to mind, I will say this. I'll leave y'all with this. Hey, let's not, let's stop throwing our legends in rap battles. Yeah. Let them, just let them be legends. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, let's stop one. Nobody wants to see that. See that. Just let them be legends and let them be great. That's it. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you to my brother Brinsky for allowing me to come on his channel. Much love to my brothers I just met, Jay Walk, Tez, awesome guys, man. I sure appreciate y'all boys, man. Shout out to all the crew, all Ty and Jans and, 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 and Coach Al and, and Piano Man and everybody, man, Coach oh. Carl, the whole crew, man. Shout out to all those guys, man. They awesome at what they do. Please tap in with these guys, man. Um, but you can find me at JMHO Sports Talk. Just my humble opinion. That's all it is on YouTube and Twitter. JMHO Sports Talk on YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, no more at And you better beat Auburn. Yep. <laughs> or you or, 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 or you really gonna see the flames then. <laughs> yeah, make sure y'all wow. follow him up and subscribe to my boy China. He almost at a thousand sub. We need to get him now before Thanksgiving. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm be on it tomorrow. But, of course, uh, I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw. Y'all catch me on Instagram at B underscore Shaw 5. Uh, on Twitter, B underscore Shaw. And, of course, the uh, uh, YouTube channel, Sharpshooters Podcast. Appreciate everybody. Shout out to The Haven. Shout out to um, Quint. Shout out to R-Line. Um, guys ain't been on the show in a minute. But, of course, they being great everywhere else. But, as always, it's that time of the year. I said I wasn't going to say it until the Iron Bowl came up. I got to make sure I post this one last time. This need to be my <laughs> face <laughs> all week long. <laughs> but, as always, F. Auburn and roll down.